This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ. We are getting ready for our midweek uh, prayer and praise service. We do every first uh, Wednesday of the month. This is March the 4th, 2020. And we're getting ready for our service. This time we're going to turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms. Whereby we will read, read verses from here that will glorify God. And give Him honor. And give him praise as well. That will cause our hearts uh, to be pricked. That we may love him forevermore. And that he may be assured by our performance before him. That we are his children. And that we need him in our life. Uh, if you have your uh, Bible term to the book of Psalms. And we will begin reading uh, at Psalm one hundred. 19 Psalm 119 and we will begin at verse number 1 Psalm 119 and bless uh, verse number 1 it reads as follows blessed are they on the fire in the way who walk in the law of the Lord Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. All oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I praise thee with a rightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. I will keep thy statutes, O oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal well, shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto according to thy word? <clears throat> With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Search, teach me, forgive me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in a way that thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. May the Lord have choice blessing those who hear, read, and do his word. If you have your song book, please turn to song number two, two six one. Two six one. We'll sing all three verses. If you haven't sing with me to uplift our voices unto the Lord. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now say, am I? Love lifted even me, love lifted even me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted even me, love lifted even me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me all my heart to him I give ever to him I cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs faithful loving service to to him belongs Love lifted even me, love lifted even me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted even me, love lifted even me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely says, He will lift you by His love out of the angry waves. 
He's the master of the sea. Billows His will obey. He your Savior wants to be. Be saved today. Love lifted even me. Love lifted even me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted even me. Love lifted even me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Amen. Amen. Let's this time let's go to Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This time we approach you, thanking you for all your blessings, especially for salvation through your Son Jesus Christ. We ask you, Father, to clean our hearts and minds as we approach you, asking to bless this congregation. Give it the zeal that is needed that it may perform both as we gather and away from this building. We pray this also, Lord, for our leadership as well as those who are ill and bereaved, Father. We ask you to continue to lift them up. That be not discouraged with the things that are facing their life at this time. Dear Father God, we also ask you to not only bless this congregation, but all the congregations that bear your name, wherever they may be. We're hoping, Father, that they too will follow our lead as we continue to speak only what you have written, adding or taking away nothing. Father, we ask you that we will continue to have a mindset and a voice that will cause all that watch us, whether they be saint or sinner, to be inspired to do the things which are well-pleasing and accept them in your eyesight. Knowing this, Lord, that you will come and you will return to this earth. And you will come with those that have died before you return. And Father, those that are remaining on the earth, we lift them up that bear your name. Father God, O oh, servants, shall we be with you as one in heaven, which is our desire and our hope, dear Lord. We pray this and hope that all that hear and all that will hear in the future will understand this is the greatest opportunity that we have ever been given. To be called your children and be with you forever. Father God, we ask you to continue to bless us and be with us. In Jesus Christ's holy and righteous name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Saints. Good evening, brother. Good to see everyone this evening. Um, turn, turn your Bibles at this time to Psalms 89, chapter 89, Psalms chapter 89, you're reading verses 34 through, through 44, Psalms 89, 34 through 44, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne is the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as the faithful witness in heaven. Salah. But thou hast cast off and abhorred, thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Thou hast made void the covenant of Thy servant, thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that passed by the way spoil him. He is reproached to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword, and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease, and cast his throne down to the ground. Amen. Amen. This time we'll be singing from page... Six six eight. Okay.
God he is alive. Page 668. If you have that, let us sing. There is beyond the eyes of blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted the skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with His great mind. There is a God. He is alive. In Him we live and we survive. From the star God created man, he is our God, the great I am. There was a long, long time ago a God whose voice the prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, who speaks from His inspired Word. There is a God, He is alive, in Him we live, and we survive. From the star of God, created man, he is our God, the great I am. Secure is life from mortal mind, God holds the germ within his hand. Though men may search, they cannot find, for oh, God alone does understand. There is a God, He is alive, in Him we live, and we survive. From the star of God, created man, He is our God, the great I am, the great I am, our God who sun upon a tree, a life was willing there to give. That he from sin my set man free, and evermore with him could live. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live, and we survive. From dust our God, created man, He is our God, the great I am, the great I am. Amen. Let's uh, go to God in prayer at this time, saints. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you, Father, for sending down your Son to this earth to die for our sins, Father, to establish the church, Father, with his own blood, to purchase it, Father, to give us the Holy Spirit, that seal, Father, that separates us from the world, Father, that seal, Father, that comforter that teaches us how to think and how to speak, Father, that gives us the remembrance of your word, Father, in times of trial, times of temptation, Father, that gives us the comfort, Father, to know and to trust, Father, that you will guide us, Father, through any situation that this earth has for us, Father. We ask that you may sanctify us all, Father, from all unrighteousness, Father. Strengthen us, Father. Heal any, Father, that is sick, Father, or afflicted in their bodies, their minds. Amen. Comfort anyone that needs comfort, Father, uh, from any um, discomfort that Satan has caused, Father, this world has caused, Father. We ask also that you may strengthen Continue to strengthen Brother Johnson, Father. Yes. And 
We ask that he may be healed and be 100% Father as he returns. Also, can pray for Brother Gibson, Father. You know, yes. Satan is attacking our brother severely, Father. We ask that you may comfort him in every angle, Father. Give him understanding that he may comfort those who need comfort. And strengthen him, Father, through this time. And we pray for his mother as well, that she, Father, may, may heal 100%. Yes. Father, her infirmity. We ask that you may watch over all the churches of Christ, Father. Help us to be one, the same mind as Satan's judgment. Guide us to put away all pride and self-will or self-glory, Father, and that we glorify you in our words and our thoughts and actions, Father, and that we, Father, seek after your will only. We ask that you may lead us and guide us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, again, good evening, saints. Uh, this Wednesday. We have a midweek devotion to offer praise to God Amen. for everything that He's done for us. And also just to read His Word to remember, you know, who He is, who He was, and what He did in the past, and who He is today, as He exists forever. And just to see the hope through the hope that they had. And so we can have hope today based off, you know, because He didn't change personalities. That's right. He's going to be the same uh, forever. And so... We want to talk about a subject tonight. Uh, this that was on my mind: uh, comparing coronavirus with sin. I want to right. talk about that real quick, um, t- since it's on the subject here. Because you know, right now it's a subject everybody's talking about. So I want to uh, look at a few scriptures in uh, Genesis chapter two. Verse 17, I believe that there's about uh, 11 people that have uh, died in the U.S., in Washington, and California. And uh, when you look at the people, actually, so there's only 11 people. When you look at the people that die every day from normal causes, it's over 150, about 150,000 people die every day around the world. Uh, and that's just old age or, you know, other death related causes in comparison to just 11 um now coronavirus has been around since the 1960s it's not nothing new they have it i believe on the back of lysol um uh, but the idea is that uh, it's spreading you know it's just spreading in different areas and so that that's where that fear comes in but <clears throat> you have to also look at this in a spiritual mindset of how fast sin could spread yes. you know they have these challenges these instagram challenges and some of them, they spread throughout all the U.S. and the world, and some of them are sinful, you know. But the idea is that Satan can uh, grab your attention by making them funny and sinful. Mm-hmm. When it's funny, it entertains your mind, so you don't pay attention to the sin part, and therefore you take it all in. Yeah. And now it becomes a part of your DNA, it becomes a part of your character, right? And so... That can spread so easily, these, these challenges that they have online. Uh, but there's, you know, sins that have spread all over the world. Some of the most so-called toughest gangsters have, you know, agreed with homosexuality. You know, mm-hmm. even some have agreed with, as I mentioned before, uh, Dwayne Wade, you know, calling his son a, do- a woman. And so this is a shift that is happening, That's the sin that is permeating uh, even as that fear of coronavirus. And that's one thing that we have to pay attention to is, is sin. Because that kills directly to the soul. In Genesis chapter 2, uh, looking at verse 17, he says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. And so that's the promise that God has given to Adam and Eve. That's right. And if you look at chapter 3, um, looking at verse number 2, it says, The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree, of, the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Mm. So that's the answer that she gave. She knows. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For well, God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Now, they died spiritually, uh, it's on the inward first. 
and then they died physically. That was after. Uh, the causes of coronavirus, the effects of coronavirus, I believe, respiratory issues, and you pass out. Uh, but the idea is that when it comes to sin, it, it, it's on the inside. Yes. And it's in your mind. You hold on to it. You know, God wanted uh, in Revelation of Jezebel to let go of that sin. I gave her space to repent, but she, she held on to it. It <coughs> stayed in her. And if you don't discern between good and evil what sin was not, then you're going to hold on to it for days, months, or years. You know, and so the remedy today spiritually is the blood of Christ, the, the Holy Spirit of God that washes away all unrighteousness. You know, that's, and so there's massive sins that are being carried out throughout the world. The sin of uh, fornication, uh, living with one another and they're not married. Um, and so that's the sin that's, that's being done massively. And so if you look at another scripture, Genesis 3. Looking at 14, uh, this is the effect. This is what happened. The Lord God said unto the servant, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou all shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. This was a transformation for the serpent. Uh, and he was actually made a new creature, but worser. <laughs> Because now he's got to live on his belly. And so, verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That's it. That's what happens. That's what happened afterward. Verse 17, And to Adam he said, Because, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Now, he says a word because. This is the reason that this next thing that I'm going to say is going to happen. Uh, Cursed is the ground. Verse 18, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. So when you ever, if you ever got prickled by a thorn hmm. or a thistle, thanks Adam. All right, Bruce. It came from Adam. That's the reason why you got blood on your fingers now, Adam. And so, and that's the thing because concerning God, whether he wants to shut this down, even as Ebola will slow down. Swine flu will slow down. Yes. God could either increase this coronavirus or he can belittle it. Yes. He could hear the sound, hear the prayers of the righteous and he can heed it and slow it down. Right. Or if he has a specific curse that he wants to implement. You know, there's many saints I know that pray when they were being taken to Babylon uh, afterward. But there's, they're going to be there for a certain time, 70 years. Man. For Jeremiah wrote. And so... We continue to pray, but the idea is that God's word and will will be number one at the end. And so, because God gets angry, you know, God gets angry at sin. He gets angry. The world has so much curses in it because of sin. And, you know, God's rule and authority is number one. Um, if our prayers are in according to his will, he answers it. But if it's not, even as Jesus' prayers when he was in the garden were not answered. So it has to be according to his will. Uh, look at uh, Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. We're going to look at another thought here. So yeah, 150,000 people die approximately every day. In comparison to coronavirus in the U.S., that is nothing if you want to compare it. But the idea is that, uh, yeah, those 150 is because of sin as well. Because we're supposed to live forever. But because we sin, we have to perish. We have to die. Right? Uh, Numbers chapter 16, looking at verse number 41. The scripture says, now after, this is after. It says, but on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. And against Aaron. Saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. Now, here's the problem here. 
They murmured and then they start saying stuff. They, they didn't just murmur inwardly. They murmured and, they, and then they let it out. Uh, so what happened before was, the, the day before, was Kor and his company, they went up to Aaron and Moses and they told them, according to verse 3, you take too much upon yourselves, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. Now here's the, here's the number that he is calculating. He's saying every one of them. Every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation. And so they just did a measurement of everyone is holy. And so what's happening that, or what happened that day was that verse 34. Uh, uh, the earth swallowed up our of course company. Verse 35 says... And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. So 250 men, they, the earth swallowed them. It was like a, it was, it was like when a whale swallows up a lot of fish. That's how the earth did to these 250 men. It just opened its mouth and then it closed it back up. Now, these men in verse 41 are murmuring. Verse 42 says, And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get ye up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire thereon, from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took the mo uh, and Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living and the plague, it says, was stayed. Mm. Now they that died in the plague, it says, 14,700. 14,700. Besides them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle, the congregation, the plague, the Bible says, was stayed. Amen. Now, the scripture says concerning plague, the definition of number 16. H5063 is a disease, <coughs> an infliction. A disease or infliction is what that, that word means in H05. And so, what is diseasing the church today? Um, what is the plague? The plague of 70 AD doctrine is trying to come from the north to the south. You got the doctrine of marriage, divorce, and remarriage that some saints have in their hearts all in different churches of Christ around the U.S. and around the world. And that needs to be removed. That needs to be taken out uh, and allow the Spirit of Christ to heal it. But again, uh, if you die in your sins, the Scripture says, where I am, he says you cannot come. Amen. Exodus chapter 12 verse 13. Exodus 12 13. I want to look at another thought here. Because in the time of Moses. When they were in Egypt. As Moses was uh, going up to Pharaoh. And he, he was explaining to him to let my people go that we may worship. And verse 13 of Exodus chapter 12. He says and the blood shall be. To you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it for a feast unto the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leaven bread from the first day until the seventh day, that so shall be cut off 
uh, from Israel. Now, when you look at this and exactly what happened, uh, they had to put the blood on the doorposts. And what God did is he destroyed the firstborn of Egypt. And also the firstborn of the cattle and of the animals. And whoever did not, uh, of course the Egyptians, we know that they didn't have that blood on the doorpost. Because he commanded to the Jews. But the idea is that today the blood is, is the spirit of Christ. The blood of Christ. And we have to have that without any any uh, stain, any uh, blemish. Now, here's in verse number 15. Look what it says. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off uh, from Israel. And if the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you, no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day that I have brought you your armies out of the land of Egypt, therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Now, I want to look at that because they have rules to follow. They had rules that they were supposed to follow uh, concerning this as well. And so, what do you have? You have the Holy Spirit, the blood on the doorpost. Now you have to follow the rules in the church. You got to follow the rules. You can't just, oh, I got blood on my doorpost. That's it. No, no, no. You have to follow specific rules that Christ gave us to follow. And so these individuals, the plague, if you can imagine, that was a big day for the news in Egypt. Every firstborn died, which is the strength of the family. Uh, when the firstborn is born, all the firstborns died. And because they did not yield to God and to Moses. And that's going to be us, saints. That's going to be us. Is if we don't yield to Christ, then we're going to be in hell. Amen. We're going to be in hell forever. Now, in Isaiah chapter 1, in the New Testament. Isaiah chapter 1, New Testament. Uh, looking at verse number 4. Uh, the scripture says, Ah, sinful nation of people laying with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have left the Lord. So they were once with Him. They left. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. And so, a provocation to anger. And that's one thing that... Uh, this is powerful because this is one thing that the world doesn't understand and they don't even think about. They don't think about God's anger because they're so caught up in this world, the cares of this world, pleasing their wife, their husband, their family, themselves. They don't think about God's anger and, and how it's, it's live and it's either instant or it's boiling to be released in the future. Amen. They don't consider and recognize, man, if I step this way, I don't want God's anger to be on me because he hates that sin. Or if I step this way, in this direction, it's also a wrong direction. And so the world does not love God and Christ enough to want to know how his mind is in order to recognize what is good, what is evil, which is a right step to take, which was a wrong step to take. They don't fear him, neither do they love him enough to want to think and know how he thinks, what makes him angry, what makes him happy. Because they're, all, they're worried about self. They're worried about themselves. And that's the thing. And even in the church, if you allow this world to wear you out with sin, with the pleasure of this world, then you will begin to worry about self more. And then put God's thoughts the, the even worry about how, what God thinks about away, and you begin to drift away from the church. Amen. And it starts in the mind first, and then the body is going to follow after. Uh, verse five says, "Why should ye be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart." The Bible says, "Faint from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, 
There is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified, the Bible says, with ointment. And that is similar to how Job was when Job was in that state. His skin uh, fell upon him, fell off of him. The Bible says in Job 2, uh, 7, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore balls from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Now, uh, as we read in verse 6, this is how they, they were spiritually. They were sick, no soundness from the head all the way to the foot. And so when, when sin begins to uh, rotate and bubble inside of a, a, a soul, their minds are, are everywhere. Their minds are distracted, unstable. They are led by the flesh. So their minds are in every direction. It's like a chicken with his head cut off. It has no stability, no soundness. Uh, somebody cuts them off in traffic, they throw a finger. You know, not the index. And the idea is that they, they are ruled by this because they allowed it. Look at, uh, look at Numbers 31, verse 16. Old Testament. Old Testament, Numbers 31, 16. Be careful who you listen to because you can be plagued uh, by them spiritually. Just as, just as breathing in the coronavirus can plague you, the words that someone breathes in your direction can plague your conscience. Numbers 31, looking at verse 16. Um... It says, Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. He says, And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. That's what it says. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that had known man by lying with him. But all the women, children, that have not known a man by lying with them, keep alive for yourselves. And do ye abide without the camp seven days? Whosoever hath killed any person, and whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. This is what you call quarantine and extermination. Quarantine and extermination. Um, this is what he's speaking about concerning the plague. He's letting them know, remember the plague that happened through the council of Balaam. Now, in Galatians chapter 2, there was an un another individual who had counsel and who was causing some to go astray based off his actions. Galatians 2, I want to look at... Uh, Verse number 11, it says, But when Peter was come to Antioch, he says, I was stood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that, certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Like what he says, And the Jews, the other Jews, dissembled likewise with him. And so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Right? Amen. He says, carried away with their dissimulation. <laughs> Barnabas was contaminated right. by the example of Peter. Now, look at verse 9. Because Paul is also recognizing another angle of who he works with. It says, and when James, Cephas, as Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given me unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go into this heathen 
and they unto the circumcision. Only they were that we should remember the poor, the, the same which I also was forward to do. Now, he mentioned a word here, which is seemed yeah. to be pillared. Um, he says that, he says seemed to be pillars because now he sees a weakness in the stability of the pillar. And in Galatians 2, uh, it seemed 1380. Uh, the scriptures, I mean, the context of it is the base of of the same meaning to think truthfully or uncertainly be accounted of. Uh, be of reputation, seem, suppose, think. And so that's what word he uses because he recognized a shift in their character. Amen. And he didn't like that. He didn't like weakness. And that's one thing that sin does. It makes you it makes you weak. Uh, spiritually weak. Mentally it makes you weak. Uh, it's nothing good comes from it. Amen. Fear. That's why God told Joshua, uh, be strong and courageous. Why? Because fear weakens you. It's going to weaken your walk. Weaken your words. You're going to walk backwards instead of forwards. Um, concerning taking the land. Uh, because why? Verse number 12. He would join separate himself. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. He was fearing them which were of the circumcision. And that caused dissimulation. Caused a problem. With Barnabas. And with Peter. And with the Gentiles. And with the whole gospel itself. On how it should be obeyed. Amen. This caused a problem. This fear caused a problem and Barnabas he breathed in that fear he breathed in the actions of Peter and he followed in his footsteps look at uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 24 this is uh, Old Testament 2 Samuel chapter 24 I want to start at verse number 10 Scripture says, And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly, and that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophets, prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came. To David and told him and said unto him, So this is Gad going up to David. God talked to Gad to go up to David. He says, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy, in thy land? That's one, seven years of famine. Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in the land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me, which is God. Verse 14, and David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us, he's, he's now he's trying to communicate with, with Gad, let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. So he wanted to get rid of that option. I don't want to fall in the hand of my enemies. Let's, let's get rid of that one off the top. Uh, and so verse number 15, so the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed and there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba uh, 70,000 uh, men so 70,000 men died because of what? because of sin so sin, sin was uh, the, bringer, the, the bringer of it and when the angel and when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel, destroy the people, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Araniah, the Jupicite. Now I want to say this. Um, concerning a pestilence, concerning a plague, it could either be brought by God directly, it could be brought by an angel, God's angel, or God could allow Satan to bring it, even as Satan hit Job up. That's right. Even as Paul... Remember, Paul put, uh, he blinded Illumis. 
right. he gave him an illness of, of the eyes. Now the same the same power that gave him the illness was the same power Jesus used to remove the blindness That's right. from an individual. So Jesus removed blindness, and then Paul gave blindness. And so just remember that God's will, or God allows either one of His angels from heaven to do it, or God allows uh, Satan to do it. So in this verse, verse 17, David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against uh, my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arunah, Aruna the Jebusite. And David According to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded, and Aaronio looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him, and Aaronio went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground, and Aaronio said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague, he says, may be stayed from the people. And Aaron said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt offering, uh, for burnt sacrifice and threshing, and instruments and other instruments of the oxen for wood. All these things did Aaron as the king uh, give unto the king. Aaron said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. And the king said unto Aaron, Nay, but I will surely buy it. Of the other price, neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And so, if you look at this verse, Aranaya asked him twice. He told him, I'll give it to you for free two times. Uh, but David said, no, I have to give something. My sin is great. Uh, all these people that died, I have to put up something of value because I've done something so huge I have to I have to give something of value you know there's during a, when he was in war uh, he was actually um, thirsty and some of his men gathered water for him Amen. he offered that water as a as an offering for God and uh, because you know that he had the mind on the, on the heart of God that's what David had and he recognized his sin and he understood that no I'm not going to just take it for free because it's for free that's right. you know so he didn't have that greedy mindset of well I could keep this silver for myself and he said no I have to I have to give something verse 25 and David built there an altar and the Lord and offered burnt offerings peace offerings so the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed uh, from Israel. Amen. The plague was stayed from Israel. And so that's just, this is what we are continuing to fight. That the plague of sin may, may cease. Uh, many call, few are chosen. You know, many go through the broad way, few through the, through the narrow. Uh, few go through the narrow, many through the broad. Uh, so what we plead for men to do is to get rid of that plague that's, that's in them. Amen. That's sin. That they not, not die eternally. Look at Matthew 24 verse 12. And here's what we're going to deal with in the future as well. Because Jesus said we were going to deal with it. Matthew 24. Look at verse um, number 11. Matthew 24 11 it says, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. So we got a problem here. We got many false prophets and many be deceived. So that's that word many is not few. That's a large population. That's right. uh, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Now, this is the status that's going to happen continually until Christ returns. It says there's going to be many more false prophets come out. And because iniquity is going to abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So 
sin is going to get bigger and bigger. It's going to abound more and more. And that's why the love of many gets colder. Because the more sin that's in them, the colder they get. Because Christ and God is love and natural affection. But the more sin they have that's abounding, the colder that love gets. You know, towards mankind, towards the truth, mm-hmm. towards what is right. Amen. It gets colder. I look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is for the church. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Looking at verse number 10. The scripture says, 2 Timothy 3.10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, he says, faith, long-suffering, charity, uh, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, which, I mean, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now, we just read in Matthew 24, that if you endure unto the end, what does the Bible say? You'll be saved. Yes. You have to endure unto the end. So Paul said in verse 11, but I, uh, he says, What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now, some saints, when they go through persecutions, afflictions for the word's sake, they don't endure it. They don't endure it, and then they leave the church. That's what Matthew talks about. Uh, Mark 4 talks about they leave the faith because they don't endure that. You have to endure it. You have to remember the word and endure it. Uh, Why is Las Vegas always packed? Why are casinos always packed? Is it because of holiness and righteousness? No, it's because of sin. Why aren't churches a a Christ packed? Because of sin? No. Because it's holy and pure. And because they've abounded in sin so much that they don't want to come near the truth because it exposes them. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, verse number 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving, the Bible says, and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. And that's what it says. They're going to wax worse and worse. Amen. Verse 14. But continue thou in the things... Which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. He says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Man. And so, Man. saints, that's what we have is the scriptures to uh, furnish us unto all good works, to prepare us to do all God's works that He wants us to do. Amen. Because this world is going to have different times, different seasons a season of Ebola, season of swine flu, season mm-hmm. of coronavirus. You got a season of sin in this time frame, a uh, season of death in that time frame. But we have to hold on to God's word. And not allow the things of this world to overtake us. Amen. And so to start in this race, in this walk, to carry a cross, they asked Peter an important question uh, in Acts chapter 2, looking at verse uh, number 37. It says, Now when they heard this, heard what? That God has made that same Jesus, whom they crucified, Lord and Christ, they were pricked in the heart and sent to Peter and the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren, what shall we do? They were asking, not just Peter, but the other apostles as well, what do we do? What do we do now? Mm. We know we hated Christ. We envied Him. Uh, I was there. Some of them were there saying, crucify Him, crucify Him. And they're asking now, what do we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God uh, shall call. And this is a promise that is still given today in the church of Christ. Romans 16, 16 is that you can have all your sins removed that you've done since you were a child until today. And you can have that Holy Spirit, that comforter from heaven that will give you understanding of the scriptures. That will guide you through this lifetime to discern between good and evil. Between the spiritual cancer and the ointment that heals that spiritual cancer. And God will give you this if you just obey what he, his servants have said in the scriptures. A man who repeats the oracles of God has to give this to you. Even as in Acts where Philip went to the eunuch. The, and you, the eunuch talked to him. And Philip told him, you understand what you're reading. And he said unto him, how can I accept some man guide me? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Acts 8.32 And like a lamb done before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. That's the question he asked. Who is going to declare his generation? The apostles declared his generation in their time frame. Uh, Timothy then declared his generation. The leaders that Timothy taught after Timothy passed declared the generation of Christ. Verse 34 says, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the, pro the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him uh, Jesus. Amen. He preached unto him Jesus. He, he connected the dots from Isaiah 53 to the time frame that Philip lived. That that's the man. That's the man that is talking about. The exact person that the scripture is talking about. An exact connection. And so what, what connection do we have? The works that we do are connected to the scriptures that the apostles taught in every city when they preached and churches were made that's the works that we do in the scriptures and so what do we point to as well we point to the scriptures we point that the future is when christ will return to take everyone out of paradise and those on earth will be taken out we point philip point he pointed exactly direct hit isaiah 53 jesus and we point the exact scriptures um Concerning the truth. Even as uh, Psalm 89 says. I will not alter my words. We don't alter. And verse 35. Um, I mean 36 says. And as they went on their way. They came to a certain water. And the eunuch said. See here is water. What did hinder me to be baptized? What hinders me? What's causing me to not be baptized? What do I have to do? Or what is what is going to not allow me to? Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, he says, thou mayest. Amen. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. He's not just a prophet like the Muslims say. That's right. He's not an angel like other religions say. Right. He is the Son of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Genesis, God said, let us make man in our image. He was talking to Christ. In Proverbs chapter 30, it mentions what is his name, what is his son's name. Mm -hmm. These are from the Old Testament as well. And the eunuch believed that Christ is the Son of God. Without having to see Christ, he believed. That's right. And so you don't see Christ, but you have to believe that he is. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit... Uh, of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. He received the Holy Spirit. Galatians 3.27 says, For as many as have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ, and he had his sins removed. You can receive the Holy Spirit today. Uh, if you live in another state, you can 
uh, call us. We have our numbers listed in the videos. Um, and we can have a Bible study on the phone. Amen. And we can also guide you.